In theoretical physics, Feynman diagrams are pictorial representations of the mathematical expressions describing the behavior of subatomic particles. The scheme is named for its inventor, American physicist Richard Feynman, and was first introduced in 1948. The interaction of subatomic particles can be complex and difficult to understand intuitively. Feynman diagrams give a simple visualization of what would otherwise be a rather arcane and abstract formula. As David Kaiser writes, since the middle of the 20th century, theoretical physicists have increasingly turned to this tool to help them undertake critical calculations. And as such, Feynman diagrams have revolutionized nearly every aspect of theoretical physics. While the diagrams are applied primarily to quantum field theory, they can also be used in other fields, such as solid-state theory. Feynman used Ernst Stuckelberg's interpretation of the positron as if it were an electron moving backward in time. Thus, antiparticles are represented as moving backward along the time axis in Feynman diagrams. The calculation of probability amplitudes in theoretical particle physics requires the use of rather large and complicated integrals over a large number of variables. These integrals do, however, have a regular structure, and may be represented graphically as Feynman diagrams. A Feynman diagram is a contribution of a particular class of particle paths, which join and split is described by the diagram. More precisely, and technically, a Feynman diagram is a graphical representation of a perturbative contribution to the transition amplitude or correlation function of a quantum, mechanical or statistical field theory. Within the canonical formulation of quantum field theory, a Feynman diagram represents a term in the Wick's expansion of the perturbative S matrix. Alternatively, the path integral formulation of quantum field theory represents the transition amplitude as a weighted sum of all possible histories of the system, from the initial to the final state, in terms of either particles or fields. The transition amplitude is then given as the matrix element of the S matrix between the initial and the final states of the quantum system, motivation and history. When calculating scattering cross-sections in particle physics, the interaction between particles can be described by starting from a free field that describes the incoming and outgoing particles and including an interaction Hamiltonian to describe how the particles deflect one another. The amplitude for scattering is the sum of each possible interaction history over all possible intermediate particle states. The number of times the interaction Hamiltonian acts is the order of the perturbation expansion, and the time-dependent perturbation theory for fields is known as the Dyson series. When the intermediate states at intermediate times are energy eigenstates the series is called old-fashioned perturbation theory. The Dyson series can be alternatively rewritten as a sum over Feynman diagrams, where at each interaction vertex both the energy and momentum are conserved, but where the length of the energy momentum for vector is not equal to the mass. The Feynman diagrams are much easier to keep track of than old-fashioned terms, because the old-fashioned way treats the particle and antiparticle contributions is separate. Each Feynman diagram is the sum of exponentially many old-fashioned terms, because each internal line can separately represent either a particle or an antiparticle. In a non-relativistic theory, there are no antiparticles and there is no doubling, so each Feynman diagram includes only one term. Feynman gave a prescription for calculating the amplitude for any given diagram from a field theory Lagrangian, the Feynman rules. Each internal line corresponds to a factor of the corresponding virtual particle's propagator. Each vertex where lines meet gives a factor derived from an interaction term in the Lagrangian, and incoming and outgoing lines carry an energy, momentum, and spin. In addition to their value as a mathematical tool, Feynman diagrams provide deep physical insight into the nature of particle interactions. Particles interact in every way available, in fact, intermediate virtual particles are allowed to propagate faster than light.
The probability of each final state is then obtained by summing over all such possibilities. This is closely tied to the functional integral formulation of quantum mechanics, also invented by Feynman C. Path integral formulation. The naive application of such calculations often produces diagrams whose amplitudes are infinite. Because the short-distance particle interactions require a careful limiting procedure to include particle self-interactions, the technique of renormalization, suggested by Ernst Stuckelberg and Hans Werther and implemented by Dyson, Feynman, Schwinger, and Tomonaga compensates for this effect and eliminates the troublesome infinities. After renormalization, calculations using Feynman diagrams match experimental results with very high accuracy. Feynman diagram and path integral methods are also used in statistical mechanics and can even be applied to classical mechanics. Alternative names Murray Gell-Mann always referred to Feynman diagrams as Stuckelberg diagrams, after a Swiss physicist, Ernst Stuckelberg, who devised a similar notation many years earlier. Stuckelberg was motivated by the need for a manifestly covariant formalism for quantum field theory but did not provide as automated a way to handle symmetry factors and loops. Although he was first to find the correct physical interpretation in terms of forward and backward in time particle paths, all without the path integral. Historically they were sometimes called Feynman-Dyson diagrams or Dyson graphs because when they were introduced the path integral was unfamiliar, and Freeman-Dyson's derivation from old-fashioned perturbation theory was easier to follow for physicists trained in earlier methods. However, in 2006 Dyson himself stated that the diagrams should be called Feynman diagrams because he taught us how to use them. This reflects historical fact. Feynman had to lobby hard for the diagrams which confused the establishment physicists trained in equations and graphs. Representation of physical reality in the presentations of fundamental interactions, written from the particle physics perspective, Gerard T. Hooft and Martinus Veltman gave good arguments for taking the original, non-regularized Feynman diagrams as the most succinct representation of our present knowledge about the physics of quantum scattering of fundamental particles. Their motivations are consistent with the convictions of James Daniel Buchan and Sidney Drell. The Feynman graphs and rules of calculation summarize quantum field theory in a form in close contact with the experimental numbers one wants to understand. Although the statement of the theory in terms of graphs may imply perturbation theory, use of graphical methods in the many-body problem shows that this formalism is flexible enough to deal with phenomena of non-perturbative characters. Some modification of the Feynman rules of calculation may well outlive the elaborate mathematical structure of local canonical quantum field theory. So far there are no opposing opinions. In quantum field theories the Feynman diagrams are obtained from Lagrangian by Feynman rules. Dimensional regularization is a method for regularizing integrals in the evaluation of Feynman diagrams. It assigns values to them that are meromorphic functions of an auxiliary complex parameter d, called the dimension. Dimensional regularization writes a Feynman integral as an integral depending on the space-time dimension d and space-time points. Particle path interpretation. A Feynman diagram is a representation of quantum field theory processes in terms of particle paths. The particle trajectories are represented by the lines of the diagram, which can be squiggly or straight, with an arrow or without. Depending on the type of particle, a point where lines connect to other lines is an interaction vertex, and this is where the particles meet and interact by emitting or absorbing new particles, deflecting one another, or changing type. There are three different types of lines. Internal lines connect two vertices, incoming lines extend from the past to a vertex and represent an initial state, and outgoing lines extend from a vertex to the future and represent the final state. Sometimes, the bottom of the diagram is the past and the top the future, other times, the past is to the left and the future to the right. 
When calculating correlation functions instead of scattering amplitudes, there is no past and future and all the lines are internal. The particles then begin and end on little x's, which represent the positions of the operators whose correlation is being calculated. Feynman diagrams are a pictorial representation of a contribution to the total amplitude for a process that can happen in several different ways. When a group of incoming particles are to scatter off each other, the process can be thought of as one where the particles travel over all possible paths, including paths that go backward in time. Feynman diagrams are often confused with space-time diagrams and bubble chamber images because they all describe particle scattering. Feynman diagrams are graphs that represent the trajectories of particles in intermediate stages of a scattering process. Unlike a bubble chamber picture, only the sum of all the Feynman diagrams represent any given particle interaction. Particles do not choose a particular diagram each time they interact. The law of summation is in accord with the principle of superposition. Every diagram contributes to the total amplitude for the process. Description a Feynman diagram represents a perturbative contribution to the amplitude of a quantum transition from some initial quantum state to some final quantum state. For example, in the process of electron-positron annihilation the initial state is one electron and one positron, the final state, two photons. The initial state is often assumed to be at the left of the diagram and the final state at the right. A Feynman diagram consists of points, called vertices, and lines attached to the vertices. The particles in the initial state are depicted by lines sticking out in the direction of the initial state. The particles in the final state are represented by lines sticking out in the direction of the final state. In QED there are two types of particles, electrons, positrons and photons. They are represented in Feynman diagrams as follows. Electron in the initial state is represented by a solid line with an arrow pointing toward the vertex. Electron in the final state is represented by a line with an arrow pointing away from the vertex. Positron in the initial state is represented by a solid line with an arrow pointing away from the vertex. Positron in the final state is represented by a line with an arrow pointing toward the vertex. Photon in the initial and the final state is represented by a wavy line. In QED a vertex always has three lines attached to it. One bosonic line, one fermionic line with arrow toward the vertex, and one fermionic line with arrow away from the vertex. The vertices might be connected by a bosonic or fermionic propagator. A bosonic propagator is represented by a wavy line connecting two vertices. A fermionic propagator is represented by a solid line connecting two vertices. The number of vertices gives the order of the term in the perturbation series expansion of the transition amplitude. Electron, positron annihilation example The electron, positron annihilation interaction has a contribution from the second order Feynman diagram shown adjacent. In the initial state there is one electron and one positron and in the final state there are two photons. Canonical quantization formulation The probability amplitude for a transition of a quantum system from the initial state to the final state is given by the matrix element where is the S matrix. In the canonical quantum field theory the S matrix is represented within the interaction picture by the perturbation series in the powers of the interaction Lagrangian, where is the interaction Lagrangian and signifies the time-ordered products of operators. A Feynman diagram is a graphical representation of a term in the Wicks expansion of the time-ordered products in the th order term of the S matrix where signifies the normal products of the operators and takes care of the possible sign change when commuting the fermionic operators to bring them together for a contraction. Feynman rules The diagrams are drawn according to the Feynman rules, which depend upon the interaction Lagrangian. For the QED interaction Lagrangian, describing the interaction of a fermionic field with a bosonic gauge field, the Feynman rules can be formulated in coordinate space as follows. 
Each integration coordinate is represented by a point. A bosonic propagator is represented by a wiggly line connecting two points. A fermionic propagator is represented by a solid line connecting two points. A bosonic field is represented by a wiggly line attached to the point. A fermionic field is represented by a solid line attached to the point with an arrow toward the point. A fermionic field is represented by a solid line attached to the point with an arrow from the point. Example. Second order processes in QED The second order perturbation term in the S matrix E scattering of fermions the Wicks expansion of the integrand gives the following term where is the electromagnetic contraction in the Feynman gauge. This term is represented by the Feynman diagram at the right. This diagram gives contributions to the following processes. Scattering, 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 Compton scattering and annihilation, generation of pairs. Another interesting term in the expansion is where is the fermionic contraction. 